So now we're going to use the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios to find missing sides and angles and triangles. So now we're actually going to be solving using trig ratios. As a reminder, the tangent of an acute angle is the leg opposite the acute angle over the leg adjacent to the acute angle. The sine of an acute angle is the leg opposite the acute angle divided by the hypotenuse. And the cosine of an acute angle is the leg adjacent to the acute angle divided by the hypotenuse. And if we take these values and divide into a decimal equivalent, we are going to get values that we find in our trig table. Now, to solve, we're going to either have to use A, use a calculator, or B, use a trig table. And you have this trig table in your notes. I'm going to show you that in just a second. All right, so, but first, let's look for our steps for our missing sides before we look at our trig table. So, our steps, and this is on your notes, the steps for solving for missing sides using trig ratios. We're going to first mark the angle that you're going to use for the problem. Usually the one that you're given. Be careful, don't use the right angle. Second, you're going to label the sides in relation to the angle that you're going to use. The opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Third, you're going to circle the side you're going to use to make a trig function. Fourth, you can decide which trig function you can make with those sides, either sine, cosine, or tangent. Right? That includes the one that you the, the one that you know the measure of and the one that you're looking for the measure of. You're going to write an equation using a variable for the missing side, and then you'll solve the equation for the missing side using algebra steps. And then, once we have solved the equation, we need to use our trig table or the calculator to help us evaluate. So let's take a look at this trig table. And I just put this off to the, oh, here it is. So we wouldn't have to search too hard. I just put it right over here. Right, don't worry about, the, yours doesn't even have the um, radian measure. We are not going to be working in radian measures. It's just another way to measure angles. We are going to be working only in degrees. And so notice there is a sine, a cosine, and a tangent ratio. All right, now, we'll never be working with zero degrees. Right? Um, that's a different kind of problem. Um, and not one that you can have zero degrees in a triangle. Right? Um, but next year, when we start looking at angles on a coordinate plane, uh, we can talk about zero degrees and 90 degrees. We're going to focus on anything between that. And these values may not me make sense right away, but they are the ratio of the sides. Right? So, um, Sine would be the ratio of the opposite to side to the hypotenuse. Cosine would be the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And tangent would be the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. And every single angle has a sine ratio, a cosine ratio, and a tangent ratio. And I think it makes the most sense if we look at 45 degrees for just a moment. All right, so down here at the bottom of the table, we see 45 degrees. Notice, so sine was the first, was this column here. This was cosine, and this is tangent. Notice sine and cosine are the same, and tangent equals 1. Well, what's the significance of that? Let's think about if we have a right triangle that has an angle that measures 45 degrees, this is an isosceles right triangle. Because this would be 45, 45, 90. Right? If one angle measures 45, there's going to be 45 degrees left for the other angle because this is a right triangle. Right? And 45 plus 45 plus 90 would equal 180. So the sine and the cos cosine and cosine are exactly the same because the opposite leg equals the adjacent leg. And so if we take the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg, since they're exactly the same, we're going to have 1. Right? And that's why the tangent is 1. Right? So I think that value there kind of um, helps you see why the um, the different values are what they are. They are simply the ratio of the sides. Right? And so if I take two sides, 
that are the exact same measure, right, and I reduce, well, if you divide anything by itself, it's going to equal 1. So all these values are, are the ratios of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, and the opposite side to the adjacent side. Right? And so we're going to need these values when we're working with trig values of different angles, right? Because we take the trig, we take the, the trig function of an angle, right? We can either get these values by using this table or get these values by using a calculator. Because guess what? The calculator has these values stored in it. And I will show you both, right? I, wish, I will work with the trig table so you can work with the trig table. And I will work with the calculator, so you can work with the calculator. Which you use depends solely on you. Whatever one you want to use for whatever problem you want to use it for. Right? Um, and uh, the one thing I have to caution you with my calculator on, this com on the computer is it works backwards. Um, but if you use your calculator on your phone, which is fine for homework problems, Right? Um, not fine for testing uh, purposes in terms of you know state testing um, like ACT and things like that um, but fine if you're just doing homework uh, your calculator on your phone will also work backwards so what that means if it, and some calculators work backwards so what does that mean if it works backwards well you hit the angle then the trig function if it works forwards you hit the trig function then the angle just the way it would look and so you'll get to see what to do when your calculator works backwards so I'm going to move this out of the way, but not too far out of the way, because we're going to need that. And let's look at our first problem. So we're going to do a few problems involving tangent. Right? So we're going to use the tangent ratio to find some missing sides. Using the given information to solve for the unknown in the following triangles. All right, so now if we here's our angle of reference. Right, and this, by the way, is a right triangle. And why is that our angle of reference? Well, we know the measure of that angle. Now, truthfully, we also know the measure of the other angle as well, right? because there's only 180 degrees in a triangle. And if one of them is 90 and one of them is 27, together that's 117, well, it means there's only 63 degrees left for that angle. Uh, so we could technically use that angle, but why bother when we already know that that one's 27? right? So. You don't have to use another angle if you've already given an angle. Let's use that one. And then we don't have to worry like, oops, we made a subtraction error or anything like that. Right? So relative to the angle that we are given, this would be the opposite, and this would be the adjacent. By the way, if we used this angle instead, I'll just put that measure back there. Oops, wait. Yeah, 63. I'll just put that measure back there. Uh, so if we use that angle instead, opposite and adjacent would just switch, and we'd still be using tangent. So no reason we shouldn't just use the angle we're given. All right, so when you're writing a trig equation, these are really easy to write. It is your trig function, and that's going to be sine, cosine, or tangent, depending upon what side you know and what side you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for the opposite. We know the adjacent. Who uses opposite and adjacent? Why, that is tangent. You have to take the, the, the trig function of something. The trig fun a trig function is an operation, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent can't stand by themselves. You have to take a sine of an angle, a cosine of an angle, or the tangent of an angle, because the trig functions relate to angles. What's our angle? It's the angle that we know, 27 degrees. So the tangent, 27, is equal to, and the trig function of an angle is always a ratio. Now as a reminder, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Oh, by the way, this one's in your notes. All right, so I think most of these are. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is x. The adjacent side is 16 we have now written our equation. See how easy it is? You, you identify what sides you have relative to an angle. That tells you what trig function you're going to use. The angle is the angle you're working with, right? And your ratio is the ratio using the sides that you have in the triangle um, based on your trig function. 
Since tangent uses opposite and adjacent, we're using the opposite side and the adjacent side. And of course we'd want to use those sides because those are the, th those are the sides we're either given or we're looking for, right? We wouldn't want to use the hypotenuse. We're not asked to find the hypotenuse, and we don't know the hypotenuse, right? So now your next step is just a little algebra. We want to isolate x, right? So notice x is multiplied, is divided by 16. What's the opposite? How do we cancel out that divided by 16? But well, we multiply both sides by 16, right? You would do the same thing if you were just solving, you know. So tangent 27 is just a number. If you were solving, say, 15 equals x over 5, right, you would just multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of x, or excuse me, get rid of the 5, divided by 5. We just do the same thing. Right? It doesn't matter it's a trig, trig equation, right? So don't let the fact that there's a tangent in here make you think you're doing something different. Just multiply both sides by 16. So 16 times tangent 27 equals x divided by 16 times 16. 16 cancels, so now we have 16 tangent 27 equals x. This here is actually an exact answer, right? So this is technically an answer, but this is an exact answer. But usually we get a decimal approximation, right? Now, if it asks for an exact answer, or if that was a choice, you know, on a, on a benchmark or test, right, we have our exact answer. X is equal to 16 tangent 27, because tangent 27 is just a number. Now, we're going to get that value by looking at our table. And then we're also going to get that value by using the computer, uh, um, the calculator, excuse me. And in my case, the calculator is on the computer. So let's grab our table, which is not hiding very far. All right, so now let's look at, oh, and let's get rid of this here. So now we had a 27 degree angle. And you can use your table at the same time. Yours is just actually a little bit nicer than mine, but I can't seem to find that one on my, cal on my computer. All right, so now we're going to look for, so we're looking for degrees. So we're looking for 27 degrees. All right, so you see 27 here. Here we have 27. And right here is the tangent ratio. That's the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent, right? So the relationship, if we have a 27 degree angle, is going to be 0 0.510, right? So now we're going to replace, let me get this back, we're going to replace tangent 27 with 5 point, um, oh no, I should have written it down, shouldn't I? We're going to replace tangent 27 with 5, 5 point, 0.510. Okay. 0.5. So it's a lot easier if you have the if they have the table right in front of you. I just want to make sure we're down the right value. Because if I didn't, everything else I do was wrong. 0 0.510. Okay. And by the way, I think your table goes to a little bit more goes to one more decimal place, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to multiply 16 by 0.510. And that's going to give us 8.16. Right? So 16 tangent 27 is an exact answer because that 0.517, or excuse me, 0.510 has been approximated. Right? So, it, but that's fine to have an approximated value when you're dealing with tangent ratios. If we use the calculator, we do have more, we are a little bit more precise because the calculator, any calculator, will include more decimal places. 
And let me show you how to do that in a calculator. All right, so here now, uh, very important, you have to make sure you're in the right units of measure. I am in degrees, so that's fine. All right, so I'm going to take, and this works backwards, so I've got to hit 27 first, and then tangent. So notice, all right, if I, re if I um, were to uh, round that to three decimal places, that would be 0 0.510, but I have, I'm a little bit more precise, right, because I have more decimal places in here. And then we'll multiply that times 16, because that's what we have here, 16 times tangent 27. So that's tangent 27, so multiplying by 16, and we get, uh, and we're going to round that to, uh, we'll take it to four decimal places, since we have so many, uh, 8.1524. Right? So this is just a more precise answer. 8.1524. So in the calculator, we are more precise. Right? And that's just because it, we, took, we um, used more decimal places for tangent. I am fine with either the answer from the calculator, and I am fine with the answer using the table, right? A little bit more precise, a little bit more approximated, right? But I am fine with either answer. Either one would be acceptable. All right, so that took us a little while to do this problem, but once you get the hang of it, these are pretty much uh, all the same. The only difference could be how we're isolating a variable, if our variable's in the denominator, um, and, but other than that, it's pretty much all the same. So that's uh, one last, so one important thing. You must always remember to check your calculator. It needs to be in degree mode in order to calculate the answers correctly. So if you're in class and you have a problem, um, have me check your calculator. If, it, if your answer is not making sense, it could be your calculator is in the wrong mode. Let's look at another example, all right? So we're, we're using the given information to solve for the unknown in the following right triangle. We're, so here, as our angle of reference. This is the adjacent side, and we know the opposite side. Who uses adjacent and opposite? Of course, that's tangent. All right, so when we write the equation, it's going to be our trig function, which is tangent, our angle, which is 50 degrees, and then equals our ratio, because that's what a tangent of an angle is. Right? Or actually any trig function, a cosine of an angle, the sine of an angle, it's just a ratio. And in, in the case of tangent, it's the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. Now notice x is in the denominator. That's okay. We're still going to start with the same set of steps. So remember, to get rid of, we had a, we had a um, if you look back here, oops, one more. We had 16 in a denominator. What did we do? We multiplied both sides by 16. Here we have x in a denominator. That's okay. We're going to multiply both sides by x. We've got to get x out of the denominator, right? We're going to get x all by itself, and right now it's stuck in a denominator. So if your uh, variable is stuck in a denominator, you're going to multiply both sides by that variable. If you multiply both sides by 24, right, you just have a greater number in the uh, numerator. You'd have a num you'd have uh, a larger value for tangent 50 because you'd be multiplying it by 24, and you'd still have x stuck in a denominator. So that wouldn't do you any good. So our steps are going to be slightly different. Um, when we are, um, when our variable is in a denominator, just because we got to get it out of the denominator. So we'll multiply both sides by x. We have x tangent 50 equals 24 divided by x times x. Notice this will now cancel. And our variable is no longer in the denominator. So now we have x times tangent 50 equals 24. The only problem is, is that uh, our variable is not isolated. We've got x times tangent 50, so we'll just have to divide both sides by 50. So we have x equals 24 divided by tangent 50. All right, let's use that table. to find out what tangent 50 is. And this time I promise not to keep forgetting.
It's late, you know. I get tired, too. You can see the time, so. I'm sure you can see how late it is. All right, so now I look for a 50-degree angle. There it is. I see it. I hope you see it, too. And the tangent ratio is 1.192. All right, so we are going to replace tangent 50 with 1.192. Oops, come over here. Can't seem to drag it. There we go. <laughs> Can't drag it on the smart board, we'll just drag it with the mouse. So this is 24 divided by 1.192. Come on. And that's going to be 20. Oh, I must hit purple somehow. I guess when I was moving things around, I hit purple. All right, so that is going to be our adjacent side. Now, there's actually a, a little way you can check. Uh, remember that larger angles are opposite larger sides. The other angle in this triangle is 40 degrees. So 40 is smaller than 50. That means the adjacent side should be smaller than the opposite side. And notice that 20.134 20 is smaller than 24. Back here in our other example, this angle here was 63, right? So 63 is, is much larger than 27. Uh, more than twice as large, right? Um, so we should expect that the adjacent side, the angle, the side opposite the larger angle, is going to be larger than the side opposite the smaller angle, right? And 8.16 is certainly smaller than 16, right? So that's just a way you can check, right? Smaller angles are, uh, excuse me, smaller, smaller sides are opposite smaller angles, larger sides are opposite larger angles. And of course, the hypotenuse should be the largest side in the triangle because it's opposite the largest angle. All right, and now let's use the calculator. Right? So this was using uh, our table. This is using the calculator. So. All right, and so in the calculator, we're going to take 24 and divide that by tangent 50. Now, my ca since my calculator on the computer is backwards, I have to um, make sure that I use parentheses. Um, otherwise, there's, I get 24 divided by 50, <laughs> and I take the tangent of that. And that's not what we want. We want 24 divided by tangent 50. So if you're, if you're having to work with something that's backwards, I'll just kind of show you with this one. This one is the trickiest one um, when you're dealing with a, comp a calculator that works backwards. I'm going to have to do 24 divided by parentheses 50 tangent close parentheses. And this is in the computer because it's backwards. But this would also apply to if you use your smartphone because that will also, that will work exactly the same as this does. All right, so let's get our answer here using the calculator on my computer. All right. And so I'll clear this. All right, so I'm going to take 24. I'm going to divide that by parentheses. So now I'll divide it by the whole thing. 50 tangent. Notice that's our tangent ratio but it's just taken out to more decimal places and it's not rounded just to the third decimal place. And then close the parentheses, otherwise the computer gets a little upset. Equals. So if we take it to more decimal places, we have 20, and we'll round to, um, we'll round to four decimal places. So we have 20.1384. All right, so just a little bit more precise. So 20.1384. Eight to four. Okay. And that, that little bit of difference 
is just because the calculator is able to, if we, if we put in our table all those decimal places, that would just be a very, very big table, wouldn't it? Right? And we wouldn't be able to fit it on the screen. So, but, so the calculator can have more decimal places than the, um, that little table can have. I think I've got one more example in tangent. Right? Uh, and then we're going to look at solving using sine and cosine. And you're going to find out that really, other than the fact that the sides that you use are different, um, the steps aren't any different. And how do we know that we want to use tangent? Well, we are looking for the opposite. We're looking for the height of the, uh, height of the tree. And we know the adjacent because the tree shadow is 250 feet. All right, the sun shines. Well, the sun is really not blue. Let's make the sun at least something reasonable. All right, the sun shines. The sun hits the, hits the tree, right? And the shadow ends up on the ground. All right, so the height here is the opposite. The shadow is the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent would be tangent. So we take the tangent of an angle, so tangent 22 equals h divided by 250. We want to get h by itself, so we'll multiply both sides by 250. So you're going to find these are all solved exactly the same way in terms of isolating the variable. If the variable is in the numerator, you simply multiply both sides by the denominator. If the variable is in the denominator, you multiply both sides by that variable, and then you're going to divide by the trig ratio that's next, to the, the, uh, the trig function that's next to it, right, to isolate our variable. Uh, in this case, though, we got the we got a constant in the denominator. We just multiply both sides by 250. So that is 250 tangent 22 is the exact height. Let's get a decimal equivalent to that. All right. So we're going to find the value for tangent 22 by using our table. Oops. Now I just got to move that out of the way and. I know table, there it is. So tangent 22. All right, so we can see that. It's right here. And our value is 0 0.404. That's for tangent. That's the ratio of the sides, given that we have a 22 degree angle. All right, so I just plug in 0 0.404. And that gives us h equals, and we should put a unit of measurement here because we do have a unit of measure, 101 feet. Let's do the same thing, but now let's use the calculator. So in the calculator, let me grab the calculator. Oops. Right, so I'm going to take, let me just clear that out. So I'm going to take, so we have 250 tangent 22, but this calculator works backwards. So 22 tangent, there's our tangent ratio. Right, notice we had 0 0.404. This one just carries off to more decimal places. And then times 250. So we get 101 feet, but we get a couple more decimal places. We'll include four decimal places because we have that that level of precision when we use the calculator. So 0. Point, uh, excuse me, 101.0066. So, uh, oops, I need to say call here. 101.0066 feet using the calculator, all right? And all we did was we just plugged in that ratio into the calculator. Now what if your calculator works, does not work backwards? You can just type in 250 tangent 22 and you'll get your answer. All right? So thank you for joining me in solving for some missing sides using tangent. In the next podcast, we'll look at using some other trig functions. Thanks for watching and bye for now.